Hello, I'm Billy Carson, and I'm doing my presentation on Waking the Prince by Kathy Koja. And I'm just going to give a quick overview of the story. So in this story, there's kind of two stories in one. There's a medieval setting, and there's a modern setting. And in the medieval setting, the prince is in a formal sleep-induced traditional coma, like in Sleeping Beauty. And in the modern version, he's awake, but he never tends to his girlfriend and he never acknowledges her really, his girlfriend, Sissy. He sleeps all the time and he's not nice to her, but she's kind of blinded by that from his outer appearance, his looks. And he keeps telling her that he's going to change over and over again and she always believes him and he never does. It's always the same thing. He tells her that he's going to change, and he never does. He made countless empty promises, but she's almost in a trance because of his looks. And I can't really tell, but in a way, it almost feels like Koja is trying to display to the audience that no matter how hard you try, the person you're trying to change is never going to change. You can't really change anyone. You just have to work on yourself. And by the end of the story, she does leave him because he refused to change. And she had to let her dream of a fairy tale ending go. So, some parallels between the medieval and the modern setting. I thought that she was trying to let the audience know that her inspiration was from a fairy tale, like Sleeping Beauty. And she almost tried to translate it into a more modern day version of a relationship for the audience to relate to. That was my personal interpretation of it. And I think that she was also trying to show that having a person that's not right for you is almost worse than having someone like the prince who was in a complete sleep-induced coma. And I believe the symbolism behind the prince in the medieval setting being asleep and the boyfriend in the modern setting being kind of a jerk is that she wanted to let the audience know that sometimes relationships don't end up with a fairy tale ending and sometimes your prince charming or princess doesn't wake up from their sleep or they're just jerks and they don't really care about you and they aren't there for you and I think she just wanted to let us know and that's how she drew inspiration from the medieval setting and then going to the modern setting to try to translate it into a more relatable subject for the audience. And that was my interpretation of the symbolism behind the sleeping prince in the medieval setting and the awake but kind of lazy boyfriend in the modern setting, if that makes sense. What I found interesting with the story was that Sleeping Beauty was a male character instead of a female. I don't really think it changed the storyline that much or was that different from the traditional Sleeping Beauty but I thought it was kind of cool and it switched it up and I don't really think it affected it that much however I do I did like how she did the kind of two stories in one thing with a medieval setting and then a modern setting I thought that was kind of cool and that did make me feel like it was a completely different kind of feel than a traditional sleeping in the beauty so I did like that and to end I would just like to know from you guys did you think that the gender roles affected the story or do you prefer it a certain way I didn't really care I still thought it was a good story and I still got traditional sleeping beauty vibes from it so, yeah, I just wanted to know what you think, whether it affected it or whether you liked it or not. And, um, yeah, thank you for watching and have a good day.